can you tell if someone is American or Canadian, South African or Australian? English belongs to a lot of people around the world and we all do it so differently. Understanding each other is not guaranteed. Are you a gangster? Girlfriend, now don't get me wrong. I put the O in OG. <gasps> is that so? So why do people speak like that over there? And is the Queen's English really the oldest kind there is? Let's find out. Hiya. What'd you call you then? <laughs> See, I'm gonna have my hand full with you pair of takes, aren't I? Mummy. Mummy, what is she saying? <laughs> I don't know, Claire, but she sounds awfully angry, so don't provoke her in any way. Welcome to the original home of English. British English can refer to the language of England or to all the dialects of the British Isles, Scottish, Welsh, Northern Irish, English, which may or may not have started here. I can truthfully say to you all that we children at home are full of cheerfulness and courage. The Queen's English is the most formal kind of English you're ever going to hear, even though she really toned it down over the years. Had we thought of that, that it was planted in the shade? <laughs> it wasn't in the shade originally. They call it a cut glass accent, not a slang word in sight. Every sound is articulated clearly and Keep the mouth tight, remember. It's also called received pronunciation, but the formal kind. You're not very likely to hear this outside palace walls, but take a couple of steps down the posh ladder. The millionaire had an affair with the air over there. This is contemporary RP, or received pronunciation. What do you think? Many people see it as the most polished English pronunciation, and in 1922, the BBC adopted RP so that everyone could understand their radio broadcasts. Okay, let's make this interesting. See if you know what's going on here. Oh, Daddy, look. You know when he lays up, he puts his watch on when he goes in there, put a T-shirt on, yeah. take his trousers off, take his T-shirt off, and then lay down on his monkey one arm <laughs> and get a monkey beer and then make it without that like a monkey. So this is where the real fun comes in the many vibrant and iconic accents all around the UK. We don't say but, cut, we say put, but and cut. Accents like these are some of the hardest to learn, so I've heard. Some sources say that Britain has the most accents per square mile of any English speaking country in the world, but it all started in the 5th century. Germanic tribes from Europe showed up and there were three kinds, the Angles, the Saxons and the Jutes. Out of their mixed dialects, we got Anglo-Saxon or Old English, but they all settled in different corners of Britain, so we ended up sprouting many different accents. Later, when the Vikings came, they gave English certain features from the Norse language, especially in Northern England and Scotland. Check out these Viking words, see what they remind you of. Scotland has three indigenous languages, English, Gaelic and Scots. Now we all can with English and Gaelic are, but what is Scots? Well, for centuries, it was the language of kings, a makers, a court and council documents. It was the national language of Scotland until we won the estate anymore. The Scottish people are famous for their really strong accent, the most divergent accent in the UK. But why do they speak like that? Well, it's all left over from the Gaelic language of the ancient Celtic people who lived in these parts. By the 1400s, things were changing. Gaelic became mostly confined to the Highlands, while in the Lowlands, the language was changing to Scots. And when the English came along in the 18th century, Scots mixed with English, and then we got Scottish English. Think of it as a Gaelic bass with a Scots sound and English words. People don't realise that we have so many different accents in Scotland. The West Coast and East Coast are worlds apart when it comes to how we speak. That's well, Sean. What do you do that for, you wee raj? You're a pure bam. I'm away to get some scram. I'm going to chore that off of you. You're a pure pish man, by the way. Look at you wee space cadet. Are we in bell your heat? Go on yourself, big man, by the way. Something like that. Even now, modern Highland English is more influenced by Gaelic, while Lowlands is more like standard English. They're not the only ones who roll their R's, though. Hey, where to, Em? Eh? Uh, well, I'm hoping to do a bit of shopping. They've told me to start off in Newport City Centre, and then if I fancied it to jump on the train and go to Cardiff to the new um, St David's Shopping Centre. Is that a good idea? So these guys do something really interesting. They don't emphasise any one part of a word. It's all very even, which makes for a rather charming variety of English. Welsh people have their own language, and as you might have guessed, it's a Celtic language, but in their corner of Britain, history went down a little differently. In medieval times, most people spoke Welsh, but Henry VIII decided to ban the language and everyone was forced to learn English. 
And then when the Industrial Revolution happened, there was mass migration of English speakers into Wales, and that's the really short version of why they speak English. The Welsh variety of English is hugely influenced by the Welsh language, of course, and they actually gave English a whole lot of words like penguin, corgi and cardigan. Any more of this and there'll be less of it. I mean, that's so stupid. <laughs> that's as Irish as a statement as you're ever likely to read. Like put an end to it, like stop it or, you know, you'll get what's coming to you. It could only be uttered in Ireland, but that's why I love it. Irish English, what can I say? It is a lovely way of speaking. The Irish accent originates from Gaelic speakers learning English, but believe me, there are many ways to do it. Well, the demolishers, we had to go anyway. We hadn't much a choice in the matter, but sure. It's a I'd cold, have... it's a cold journey to school this morning. Oh, good, you wouldn't belong getting frost, but... Still too easy for you? Okay, let's see what this farmer has to say. What's about a night? There'd be a full moon there about a night, and it should be bright out, and there could anyone go up in the mountains about a night, sure. That was the Kerry accent, the jewel in the Irish accent crown, and even some Irish people have trouble understanding it. Altogether, Irish English has four or five main varieties. Irish English is also called Hiberno English, and some of its uniqueness comes from, you guessed it, Irish. Stop the lights. If someone is over dramatizing a story, you can say, Stop the lights. You were not nearly killed. You grazed your elbow. Okay, so Irish people used to speak only Irish. What happened? Well, in the late 12th century, the Anglo Normans invaded Ireland. Their language was a kind of French. Meanwhile, a lot of English people moved to the east coast of Ireland. The dialect they spoke is completely extinct now, but people from the area still speak an extremely unusual kind of English. And now, when I was here, we had little old, when I was coming out of it, remember we had little old white simpies, a square one. Mm -hmm. Love it. But what about those French speakers? What do you know? They decided Irish sounded more fun. But in the 17th century, there was another wave of English arrivals, not to mention tens of thousands of lowland Scots arriving in Ulster. And eventually, of course, it happened. English was language number one in Ireland. I feel like everybody in California has like this uh, vocal um, strain in their voice. Uh, at least a lot of the girls do that I've talked to and stuff like that. Everything's like every last word of every sentence is drawn out, you know, and they say like a lot. No offense, I know not everybody sounds like this in LA, but like you kind of do at the same time. Let's face it, American English is very different from the rest of the English world. It comes in many shapes and sizes. Check out these varieties here, and that doesn't even scratch the surface. American. Regular American accent. Just this. Sounds very close to the regular Canadian accent. Sounds like no accent. Texan. Uh, Tennessee kind of accent. So sweet. I love it. Just makes me want uh, sweet tea and biscuits. Just kind of like a southern draw. Everything's really, really drawn out, you know? Like just like slathered on a piece of bread like molasses. I'm sorry if that's... Uh, offending anyone. I don't mean it like that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The East Coast was settled for longer, so it ended up with more unique accents. But when was the very beginning? Well, ships were sailing to and fro across the Atlantic from the 1500s already, but the first permanent colony settled in Jamestown in 1607. There were more migrations in the 18th and 19th centuries, and because people had come from all over the British Isles, the colonies got a full spectrum of dialects. Even when the first non-English speakers arrived, from Western Europe and Africa, English dominated. So where do you think this talk comes from? Well, the way people talk around here, I guess it'd be what more like you call hillbilly style or something, I guess. I don't know, just mountain talk. What a gem of an accent. Believe it or not, Appalachian English was influenced by Scotch-Irish immigrants and even has some vintage Elizabethan in there. But probably the biggest giveaway of an American accent is the ah, uh, the ur uh, sound. Now, plot twist here. The ah uh, thing actually started in Britain. Before the American Revolution, American and British accents were similar and they both pronounced the R like this. Britain's the one who dropped it after 1776. You know, a, a prestige move. Not all Americans kept it going, of course. Carter. Carter. Piper. Piper. Harper. Harper. Muffler. <laughs> Muffler. Garden. Garden. But okay, why the spelling changes? Well, that was because of a guy called Noah Webster. He didn't like the influence and control of the British aristocracy over the English language. All those pedantic old-fashioned rules. Old-fashioned, I should wash your mouth out with soap and water. He believed the spelling of words should match their pronunciation. So in the 1780s, he wrote a helpful little book called A Grammatical Institute of the English Language. And there you go. New spelling, new grammar, and new reading rules. The speller was really popular, so I hear. 
Now you stop that. I couldn't have another drop. I'd fall over. Oh, well, I guess one more wouldn't hurt. Canadians, you have a cool accent, but Nova Scotia is just one part of Canada with their own special variety of English. Then if you go across to Newfoundland, people speak more like this. Oh, I suppose later on I'll probably dodge out past mile or something like that. Go on, yeah, I'll pass, you know, I'll go up around, you know, Cali or something like that. Get on the go, go to a couple of house parts. The immigrants to Newfoundland were mostly Irish and Scottish, but they didn't move around much since then, so the language stayed pretty much the same. Now, how about that one particular sound Canadians are famous for? The word about, which I think is how you universally are supposed to pronounce it, but I'm not sure. They were teasing me and saying that I was saying a boot. I was not saying a boot. The proper way to say it is a boat. The way I talk is a particularly strong example of what people who study this sort of thing call the Canadian raising phenomenon. This refers to the weird way many Canadians pronounce the ow sound in words like house and down and ruined and south. Ugh, it even sounds annoying to me. Now as for the Canadian A, that sound's been hanging around Canada since the 1700s, so I don't think it's going anywhere, eh? So big question, does all this make Canadian more British or more American? Well. It's a little bit of both. And Canadian English is basically American English, imported by English-speaking American loyalists who moved to Canada to get away from the revolution. I've been fixing and cutting my field here near on 10 days, Abijah. By now, it was the late 1700s, so the original accent from England had changed. The British governors in Canada weren't very happy about all these Americanisms. To call a firefly a lightning bug is not only an abuse of language, but a breach of good taste and they promptly sent a battalion of Scottish schoolmasters to fix this, and suddenly British spellings were official in Canada. Now, after the War of 1812, even more immigrants arrived from Britain and Ireland, and then they came from around the world. Germans, Scandinavians, Poles, there were French speakers in Lower Canada, there were First Nations languages, and then American farmers started crossing the border. How's it? Yeah, like, how are you? Yeah. How's it? I love it when you say that. <laughs> yeah, how's Man, it? How's it? That's <laughs> yeah. so good. How's it going? How's yeah, it that's going? Pretty, that's like if you ever had, had to come to South Africa and you'd come and be like, how's it? How's so it? Everyone would be like, ah, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah good. But, if you are South African, many a poor soul has mistaken you for Australian, and I have it on good authority that this is really, really annoying. Right, guys? Doesn't help that foreign actors keep explaining the accent. When you hear that word, right, you can also hear the R sound. Now this isn't quite a rolled R, you don't want to go right. Some people do that, it's an older sound from South Africa, but most young speakers do right, just a tapped R. The other day I was thinking of, of, of to myself of what I can do and I thought, hey, we must have a braai. Now that is a South African accent, right? not just not a native English one. South African English is notoriously difficult to copy and the biggest confusion is between English people and Afrikaans people. This is the average South African Afrikaans person trying to speak English accent. Then you get the Hi, my name is Katinka and I are from South Africa. Then you get the very Hi, I am from South Africa. Meanwhile, the black population might sound like this. We know there are quite dangerous animals that we have in Africa. If you look at the hippo, it's the one of the animals who kill more people in Africa than any other wild animal. And then, of course, you have the communities that speak like this. So I found my friend um, a few minutes ago, trying to talk to her while she said, look, because like I wanted to plan something because we're going away on the weekend. But why do they all have such different accents? Well, let's go to the start. When the British arrived in the Cape in 1795, they didn't just find indigenous people there, they also found Dutch settlers who'd been there for quite some time, and Dutch led to the Afrikaans language. Among the indigenous people, the Khoi learned Dutch, while many people of colour learned English from missionaries. But in 1953, all the native English teachers were removed from schools, and because of apartheid, there was little chance to practice English in a natural way. In fact, before the 1990s, even English and Afrikaans kids didn't go to school together, so everyone kept speaking English with their own accents. Yo, so when you guys arrive here in June in South Africa, you might just not understand everything you hear. Are we me, bro? What did say? What? These days, younger generations sound a lot more like each other, but with 11 official languages and most people bilingual, modern South African English is a complex world of accent, dialects, and code switching. By the way, if you want to hear some great tips on learning languages in general, then you can check out my story learning kit. It'll teach you how to learn languages through stories. Check the description, it's completely free. When you just come across someone, you have a sort of mindset towards them. 
as soon as they start speaking your mindset changes like okay they can speak english yeah okay they must be like cool i guess and if you're talking before a girl she is going to be impressed by you that's the most important thing about talking yeah. english when you start talking in english and especially when you're talking really fluently yeah they they'll just they give you much more respect than they usually give to other people who are talking in other languages there is no mistaking the indian accent English first arrived in India in the early 1600s with the East India Company Charter granted by Queen Elizabeth I and then the trading ports that came after it in the coastal cities. In 1835, English was officially made an Indian language and the language of education. And in the high courts, English replaced Persian. Yeah, that, that's what they spoke. Of course, India has a ton of languages. So naturally, over time, the way Indians learned English was influenced hugely by whatever language they spoke at home. One of the biggest influences was on their grammar. I believe you. I am believing you. She likes music. She is liking the music. Nowadays, Indians who embrace English are very proud of the way they speak. Well, it's really quite funny. I was I was in bed sleeping at uh, two o'clock this morning. And my wife comes in and says, "Oh, the shop's been uh, someone ran into the shop." And I said, "Oh, what?" So I jumped out of bed and all I had was my undies on. And I've walked out the front and I've seen uh, the car smashed and I've seen the bloke walking back to the car. Australia, Australia. Football, footy, tennis ball, tennis, biscuit, bicky, chocolate, chocky, chocolate biscuit, chocky bicky. Now, how much of that did you get? Well, just like other English countries, there are many varieties here. The beginning of the Australian accent started with, you guessed it, European settlers. They arrived in Botany Bay in 1788 on 11 ships. And these people spoke many different dialects of English because they came from all over the UK. But right from the start, they faced starvation and really needed to understand each other for survival. So there was this process called leveling down where people toned down their dialects to be better understood. So in the Australian accent, we don't really pronounce R's that much. Like when we say things like together, forever, river, bar, car. And we don't usually sound like, oh nah, yeah mate, put a snag on the barbie. There are Australians with stronger accents, but we don't really sound that over the top. It gets way more interesting. The early colony was full of convicts from London who had their own kind of street slang called flash language. It was made up of words that no one else could understand, then throw in all the military terms being used, plus over 250 indigenous languages already there. And well, all of these things went straight into the recipe of Australian vocabulary. We have an obsession with shortening things. So I suppose like scarn on what's going on. Um, Can you say that again? Scarn on. Scarn on. Scarn on. on. <laughs> yeah. Scarn on, mate. Scarn on. So if you're wanting to tell someone no, you would say yeah, nah. Or if you're wanting to say yes, you'd say nah, yeah. Then the gold rushes of the 1850s brought new influences and today standard Australian English has broad, general and cultivated accents. But I know what you really want to hear. That day I seen them white fellas, they were pushing them cheeky bulls across the river onto Carney land. And the first time I saw her, that Mrs. Boss, the strangest woman I ever seen, she's not from this land. Australia's indigenous people usually speak English as their first language, but many also speak another language, or Creole. Their English varieties are called Aboriginal English and Torres Strait Islander English. Oh, I'd, I'd like it to be spoken all, all around the community, even over the Bunda and, and the Cairns and other regions, but I'd, I'd love it to be spoken all throughout the community and, yeah, song and dance. Now, one thing I hope you don't do is confuse Australians with these guys. Is the fish with the chips in the fridge? Is the fish with the chips in the fridge? Go again. Is the fish with the chips in the fridge? Perfect. P perfect. Per Her perfect. Perfect beast. Perfect beast. <laughs> English is the first language of most New Zealanders, although it only got here in the 19th century. So it's one of the newest native speaker varieties on the planet. Before that, British, French, and American whaling, sealing, and Trading ships used to visit them and actually trade with the Maori. Actually, most of the first settlers were from Australia. Many of them escaped convicts. In the end, the New Zealand accent was shaped by Australian English, American, Irish, and Scottish English, and the South England dialects. They have tons of their own terms, like these. Hey, boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at this cheeky fella. Wow, you got your pet already. 
course, of course. Shogun saves after drinking a gun full of beer before I can get one. He doesn't want you in our gang no more. He pushed them off. The indigenous Maori people gave New Zealand English a lot of the vocabulary that makes it unique. And great movie, that one. Bermuda is an overseas territory of Britain, so that has a big, big impact on our speech and also the immigration of West Indians to the island has impacted our speech greatly. Top pigeon, so I'm a footballer. So you're saying if, if a guy takes a shot and the ball goes top pigeon, that means the ball went top corner. Americans would say upper 90. In England, they would say the ball went top corner. Bermuda, we say that ball went top pigeon, boy. Well, what do you think of this guy's accent? It's quite unique, right? Not quite American. It's not exactly British. It's not Caribbean. Well, Bermudian English is a dialect that gets a lot of attention from scholars around the world. And so it got my attention too. The early settlers to Bermuda were Spanish, British, American, West Indian, and Portuguese from the Azores Islands. Their unique accent is a mixture of all these types of English, and yep, it's their first language. What's really special about Bermudian English is it still has some characteristics of Elizabethan English, and although it's technically an American dialect, they use British spelling. It's pretty cool. Now, to answer my question from the start, is the Queen's English the oldest English there is? Well, if you've done the maths, no. Received pronunciation hasn't even been around that long, maybe 200 years. That's right, it was one of those 18th century upper classy things. So now it is your turn. Which variety of English do you speak? Something I never mentioned? Let us know in the comments. And if you've had enough English for now, it's probably time to watch the next video.